Metobs by Elizabeth Lewis Williams. A raindrop needs a nucleus on which water molecules can collect. Salt particles from sea spray, dust particles from dried clay, gathering moisture from ambient air. OP1. Water dispersing sunlight showers different wavelengths, red to violet. Look! An arc made from travelling light and falling water. Do not call me vulture or accuse me of preying on a poet's heart as I anatomise this coloured stillness. Where am I seeing from and when that voices rise and fall conversing through this moving pen? 15th December 1952 Geoffrey, Robbie and myself went ashore to inspect the base hut and to declare the base reopened. Simultaneous thrill of arrival and sting of cold. What matter a door broken by persons unknown, the hollowness of empty rooms and a scattering of boxes islanded by meltwater and rain. Time to sweep floors, light fires, make our presence felt. The salt furrow has filled with earth. I am an exile in a flat country. 25th of December, 1952. Caught turkey in the oven by bending sides of dish. Rode out to the rookery where the chicks are hatching. No eggs to collect, then walked up to the top of the ridge. Found relics of past expeditions at Barnard Point. Ice is travelling in from the south and the channel is fairly full. 9th January 1952. New Essie cooker constructed in the kitchen and Jeff made his first batch of bread with great success. Listened out for Met news but nothing heard again so think they must be suspended. No news until the arrival of the Bisco. After some experimenting, David perfected his chocolate sponge. Corn stubble in the snow. The tally marks of winter. Litany of hours. Every morning, 0600 zone time, 0200 GMT. Every afternoon, 1200 zone time, 0800 GMT. Every evening, 1800 zone time, 1400 GMT. Every night. Robbie moved his bed into the Nissan. He couldn't sleep during the day because of noise. No one else seems to be in effect in the same way. Prayer. Here have we been led, by the spirit of inquiry or by restlessness. Still your wonders draw us, despite the blizzards harrowing. Grant me to understand, through all this white confusion, which comes first, to praise you or to call on you. Tell me how I can call on you if I do not know your name. Those who seek to know you will find you, and I who have learnt this faith will keep on searching. Great is the power of creation and worthy of praise. Will there be space within me to host you when I call? If you are all creation, then I am part of you, and there is nowhere you are not. The polar night is long. Who will grant me peace to know you in my heart? Do not hide your face from me. Let me trace its features. Spell out the letters of your name. In the soul's winter, flight is measured in the keening circles of the crow scarer. Black stretched wings wheel and swoop at the end of a line staked to the earth. Codes 1. Forms of cloud. No cloud. Heard a whale blowing rather close. Low cloud. Fair weather cumulus. Everyone watched its antics. Ragged low clouds of bad weather. No one thought to take a photograph. Fine cirrus not increasing, sparse, and circled several times, increasing, usually in tufts, threshing the water white. In the absence of hills, against the raw white of a February sky, trees print themselves, branches hatched like woodcut veins, their upwards flow stilled at the tips. 7th of April 1952 Miserable weather, trapped inside by drifting snow. Robbie and Ralph have been proofing the Nissen walls. 
Strips of bandage on the joints and more stuffed in holes cover the lot with tar. Barrett has discovered he has no battle dress trousers, making do this year by wearing mine. 27th of April 1953, Lunar Rainbow. OP2. No one is awake except the night breathing rhyme into the air. Listen, we have drawn a circle rising from the sea around the moon. 30th of April 1952, one breakage, two omissions. Everything comes in a box. If something's missing, you wait for a ship. Even then, there's no guarantee. Take the equipment for the Met station. There was no maximum thermometer, no drum for the thermograph, so no way of recording a maximum temperature. Of course, you can improvise. We had no Voltine tin. Its circumference was just right, the exact measurement of a thermogram. And we made a key for winding the clock with a split pin. The Stevenson screen, one. Like a beehive with louvered sides painted white to reflect the sun. This box on a stand is a house of instruments. A squat rectangle lent intelligence by its function. Its stillness has a listening stance. The bees which fly here are invisible and silent. Leave no waxy hexagons, but paper traces and honeyed number. Two. King of a small rock, it looks without eyes at the mountains whose distance is measured from here. Ice cliffs of Doomer Island, Jabe Peak, Mount William, their known heights simplifying the estimation of altitude when recording an observation of clouds. 3. Tend me. In a blizzard, snow accumulates around my coils. When the wind blows, my instruments are skittish. Hold me still, but do not expect me to read every day the same. 4. At each determined hour of the day or night, this office, the Metobs. Screen door opened polewards and a man bows before the instrument's notes in pencil temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, records wind speed and direction. Then he stands and with the evidence of his own eyes takes readings of the clouds and listens to the music of weather. 13th May 1952 The seagull with the broken leg failed to appear for scraps today, but there were nine sheath bills by the door, looking hungry and all puffed up white and tame with cold. One followed Fred all the way to the point and half flew, half hopped all the way back. Unable to say whether this change had any significance, the wind being 15 knots southwest all the time. The shags were on the rock again. David fixed up some fishing lines and we went out to try our luck. Came back empty handed. I am driving along a road, transformed by frost melt into magnesium fire, and I think I could, but don't, drive into a bridge. It's not the fear of blood and bone and pain. It's the knowledge somewhere behind white light of a family waiting at home. Codes 2. State of C. 5 equals rough. I counted 94 fag ends per square foot on the floor by the electronic equipment. Apart from the fact that sex equals very rough, it should be forbidden because of the virus. It's a disgusting habit. One person here hasn't washed his socks for 16 months. To go day after day without washing and then make bread. Nine equals phenomenal. 21st of June, 1954. Celebrated Midwinter's Day. Arthur finally abandoned attempts to repair his clarinet, which has a broken reed. Envisaging long hours of mournful burblings if he'd been successful. Codes 3. Code for present weather and general characteristics of weather. Snow. 70. Snow or sleet. 71. Slight snow in flakes. Intermittent. Continuous. 73. Moderate snow in flakes. Intermittent. Continuous. 75. 
Heavy snow in flakes. Intermittent. Continuous. Third July, 1952. Saw a very good illustration of Mother of Pearl clouds during the morning within the bearing of Mount Francis and Chabay Peak. Shy at first, a brief light on the lower slopes of the Sierra de Fief. Then, for the first time since May, ten minutes, balanced on Chabay Peak. The sun. A raven swooped in front of the car, just above the level of the road, before banking and turning out of eyesight. 13th July 1952. Constructed an igloo outside the hut, not true to Eskimo style but nevertheless very workmanlike. David spent Tuesday night sleeping out and found it very cosy, though ground drift meant he had to dig himself out in the morning. 28th August 1952, partial solar halo. OP3, rust red and yellow, a partial solar halo. This slender pilgrim keeps its watch, eyeless in the snow and bowed before the sun. August 1952, have observed at least 12 different types of snow crystal but they melt before we succeed in fixing them. We do not know the method. Took advantage of a fine moonlit night to ski to Curie Point and back in search of the luminous creatures seen earlier this year in the sea, but no luck. 1st September. Fixed some snowflakes today, and they looked fairly good specimens. 8th September 1953. Irisation. OP4. I am too corporeal to ride a chariot of fire, but look, my mind has lit upon this cloud which shimmers with the sun. Cumulus. A medium-sized cloud weighs as much as 80 elephants, or 6,268.75 blue whales. Such clouds are manifestations of convection, forming where warm air rises above sand or rock. They have enough energy in the centre to crush a plane. Often forming above small islands in the sea, they are beacons, allowing sailors to navigate without instruments before any sight of land. In Sanskrit creation myth, elephants created at the beginning of time were shapeshifters, white-winged creatures prophesying rain. 13th of October, 1953. Saw-edged stratocumulus. Towards dusk, waves are breaking in the sky, a Kelvin Helmholtz instability, saw-edged stratocumulus. 28th December 1952. Robbie and Ralph busy concreting in the Jenny room until lunchtime. Jenny is sick and needs a bed, a good solid one with shingle and sand. She needs to be cradled in a room reinforced with beams. Listen to her cough and rattle, the sputter of her valves. She will be moody, recalcitrant, but surprisingly fitted for reanimation. Hers are the habits you can try to fix. Lean against her heat, listen for her breath, diagnose with fingertips her inlet pipes and pumps, and seek amongst the broken things for bits to make her new. Light frost outside on golden sedge. Sunset clouds like long-necked herons flying home. OP7. Do not call me thief or say I string the tendons of dissected gods in the workings of my instruments when I note the parhelia circle first observed at 1400 GMT between Jabe Peak and Wall Mountain. Bring with you an observant heart. Mark this wonder. Three suns in a circle of reddish light, being of a strong intensity, blazing above a frozen sea. Today, I saw a sun dog in the clouds, ice crystals, a host of hexagons refracting light, like angels falling.